Teller says, thinking about the massive disparity between software salaries and similarly skilled labor in hard tech fields, could it be that the AI revolution causes the existence of quote unquote cushy tech jobs to recede? If AI tools exponentially multiply the number of software developers we have, then the then the individual value of any given software developer should fall, right? Ben, what do you think? I do think there's a certain um, you know the, the, there's the labor lump of fallacy sort of idea, right? That just mm -hmm. uh, that that fails to distinguish the fact that some labor is more valuable than others. And there's an analogy I think it's Keith Raboy has about uh, when you're thinking about employees. Some employees are bullets and some employees are guns. And, and what he means by that is the guns fire the bullets and the guns are much more valuable than than the bullets because they direct them where to go. The bullets are very effective. <laughs> they do their job very well, but they have to be pointed at something and sort of sent on their way. Where, where, where I think the, the, the question about AI and and these, you know, the employee base and software developers is not great news for the bullets. Um incredibly exponentially great deals for the guns. Right. And this is this is not, by the way, this may sound queer in the context of this podcast, but this is, I think, a matter of some dispute. Like when you talk about questions of AGI and ASI, super intelligence, whatever it might be, it's a question of to what extent is AI going to be a rifle versus being a bullet? Is it going to be something that is leverageable or is it going to be doing the leveraging? Like, like mm. and my take, and again, I might be wrong, uh, but my sense is the returns and the importance of being the gun are going to go up significantly because you're getting infinite ammo, right? To right. like, to, like, I mean, I don't know how I could push this analogy, but you know, like, the, <laughs> well, the, but the, there are fewer guns, you know, like a company like Microsoft doesn't that's right. need if, thousands and thousands and thousands of guns. If you, have I do think it is a, I do think ones. it is a problem. Yeah, it, it, there's a bit where software development was a, a, a lump of labor, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. like, like, it's really hard to hire to know who's who's like super awesome, who like, uh, who, who can actually, who's or, or people that can execute and people who can actually initiate and like actually sort of figure out how to solve the problem and to approach it and a lot of this lower level stuff is like ai can do it it could probably do it better it can do it more predictably it doesn't take days off it, it 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 you know in some respects like here's the deal human developers make a lot of errors right like it's not like we're we're going from it's like the self-driving car sort of thing there's a lot of bad drivers out there okay there, there there's there's things that can definitely sort of be replaced is ai ever going to drive as well as max for Stappen? Well, no, but that's not what we're thinking about. We're thinking about the median sort of driver. Gotta drive and... better than me. I, I'm not a bad driver, but I'm not a Verstappen level driver. So I think AI will win out in the long run. I mean, we appreciate to start the year out with humility on your part. Um, that's, <laughs> the, that's good by you. Uh, okay. But, but, yeah. I, so I, yeah, the I think there's a bit where developers broadly are right to feel nervous. There is a bit where you could be competent and sort of get a pretty good job and sort of sort of move along but there's mm -hmm. also you know but so i, I don't know i, I i'm oh, hesitant to make too many predictions other than to say yeah it's going to be a challenge because the reason why ai works so well with code in part is because the code kind of has to run right there's a there's a, a truth function which is does it compile does it actually does it actually work or not it's testable and right. any arena that's like that is going to be hard. Like this is like the challenge with some of the legal stuff, right? Like some some legal stuff can fall in the yeah, that's either it's either done or it's not. It can be sort of testable. Part of the whole law is being creative about like mm -hmm. what 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 is or is what not, and it's sort of yeah together, yeah. And you're dealing well, with exceptions and all these sorts of things. I mean, this question reminds me that between Christmas and New Year's, I got together with some buddies for a cigar night. And so it's like four of us sitting around the fire and we all have young kids. And at one point we were talking about like what the ideal career for our toddlers would be if we all went into like tiger mom mode and just started pushing them one direction or another. And in an AI powered economy, like we really couldn't say where the value will be created 20, 25 years from now. And that is part of the fun, but also it just sort of underscores how uh, uncertain this is 
across basically every industry. Like, would I want my kid to be a lawyer if, you know, some percentage of law just is done by AI in 25 years? I don't really know. Yeah, I don't know the answer either. And it's something, you know, obviously I think about, like my daughter is interested in design and art and things on those lines. And like, is that like, should I be encouraging that or pushing that in a world of, you know, AI generated really easy to generate yeah. pretty high quality stuff these days. Yeah. Honestly, like, like it, it's a bit where you just fall back. Like number one, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. It's something I, I've, I've thought about mm-hmm. number two. It should be a cautionary tale. The fact that the answer everyone would have told you four years ago would push them to be a software developer. <laughs> yep. Right. Exactly. Which, which, um, you know, I mean, that's, and, and, that's why this reminds me because my first thought was, as we were sitting there around the fire was, all right, like, I don't know if software engineering is going to be as lucrative in 10 years as it has been for the last 10 years. And so we're all just sort of guessing in terms of yeah. what the future will look like here. Yeah. I mean, so, so I mean, I don't know. I do use fall back on like the core principles, which is can you, raise someone that is independent that is resilient that Mm -hmm. understands their strengths and weaknesses that understands the idea that you want to figure out how to ameliorate your weaknesses don't obsess over them and focus on your strengths what does actually truly highly differentiate you i am fairly optimistic about the human condition i mean like the reality is is all of us were farmers not that long ago and yep. we've created just an astronomical number of jobs and works. We're professional podcasters. I mean, like, like the, you know, and it's the, great. We're, yeah, it, it's great. Uh, you know, yeah, Notebook LM is out there. And my sense is in a world awash in podcasts, aggregation theory is not going anywhere, Doug. Sorry. In a world of content, the, the, the stuff that can break through and can sort of drive and build things like community. It's something I, I do want to think more about. I haven't invested that heavily in Checkery, but but there's all these aspects of the human experience. Humans crave being with other humans. They 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 mm-hmm. they want that aspect. They want that connection. They want that relationship. That's not going. That's not going to go away, right? Like I the that's the um, spirit to start off 2025 with. AI yeah. will be able to outdrive me, but they won't be able to out podcast me anytime <laughs> in the near future. <laughs> so take that notebook LM. Um, yes, no, I think that's a good sentiment. Any final thoughts or should we mi- shift to Anthony here? Well, we go to An- Anthony. Yeah, there's lots of thoughts, but we have a whole year ahead of us. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Uh, Anthony says, Ben and Andrew, happy new year. Thank you, Anthony. I work in New York at a mid-sized fintech firm, he writes, and I was recently having a conversation with two friends who work at a big law firm and hedge fund, respectively. We were marveling at how far AI has come and we're reflecting on how each of us uses it in our job. All of us use ChatGPT regularly, but what struck me was that none of our companies is using a tailored version of ChatGPT grounded in proprietary firm-specific data. We're all just going to chatgpt.com every day. So my question is, what companies will will strategically benefit from deploying AI products to non-tech firms? Is it the cloud providers like Microsoft or could it be consulting companies like Accenture? Or are there others I'm not thinking of? Any thoughts there, Ben? Well, I think that Accenture and Deloitte and whatnot have been benefiting uh, a lot by sort of building these products. There Indeed. was a joke running around a couple of years ago about how they're the only companies making money from AI. <laughs> but th- so this this ties into that enterprise AI bit. We're in this actually, the, the funny thing is for all the concerns, whatever there might be about the impact of AI on employment, AI right now is awesome for employees in part mm-hmm. because it's not really clear for a lot of companies how they can leverage AI. And if you're an employee who can't, who, who has the volition and capability to use it, you have this cheat code. You're basically arbitraging either number one, you're way outperforming your colleagues because you're using it and they aren't, or you're working way less because the right. AI is doing <laughs> a lot of work for you and helping you do your job more effectively. Like, like it's this, it's this beautiful period that should come with a bit of concern because this is like the beautiful period for like <laughs> newspapers in the nineties. We're like, Hey, now we can reach everyone. <laughs> this yeah. is amazing. Uh, ads online. This is going to be great. <laughs> well, no, but it's like, Hey, yeah, we have our user base in our city. 
But hey, now we get extra readers from around the world and throw some, throw well, some ads yeah. there. It's great. Yeah, now you're competing <laughs> with everyone, right? So it is a similar dynamic, but embrace the period now where you have this basically arbitrage opportunity and companies realize there's these benefits, but because achieving the benefits is requires so much uh, user volition that mm -hmm. it's hard for employees to implement this. This is also though why I'm I'm a little skeptical about this agent sort of error because it's a change management problem. If you're a, an employer with lots of employees, how do you get your employees using AI continuously? How do you get that? How do you manage the sort of like, if it's wrong, the employee's like, you told me to use this and it was wrong. It's like, no, no, it's your fault. Well, then I'm not going to use it anymore if I'm going to get penalized for being wrong, right? right. Or like, I, I already have my way of doing stuff. Why am I going to do it sort of differently? It, there's this, it's going to be a huge change management problem. It's going to be hard to do, which goes back to why I think it's going to be just job elimination is actually going to be some of the early stuff. What stuff that can be done, whether it be customer support or, 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 or things along those lines where the AI could just do it. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to make mistakes, but it's just like, it's going to, it's going to be easier to eliminate the jobs than to try to teach people how to use it effectively and have super uneven results and outcomes that are hard to measure and how hard to compensate. So I would say to Anthony, you know, ride the wave, right? Like, like, like you, you sort of have this opportunity right now where the systems to leverage this are not clear, just beware when the systems arrive, it's, it's going to be, it's not going to be very fun. Um, I think to a certain extent. So well, that, in terms of the product category, he